Everyone, this three questions was John Mertz. There we go, my guy. Who's clapping? He said you're going to clap. <laughs> I'm actually with my friend, John Mertz here. We were talking about, and you know, we're going to leave this out because nobody cares about this. We were talking about sports, uh, shoes. <laughs> and when I get into sports and shoes, everyone tunes out right away. So John and I got that all out of the way before we got in here. John is actually the superintendent of Olivet. Uh, is it community schools? Am I saying that right? Yep. All yes. the community schools in Michigan. Michigan, one of my favorite places. I was telling him, I actually grew up uh, with Detroit Channel. So I know so much about the Detroit area for whatever reason, a big, is it Michigan Wolverines fan? Is that what you're? <laughs> Dude, MSU, Michigan State Spartans right, right, all right. the way. Go green. I always get those two mixed up. No, I'm just kidding. No one would get them mixed up. So I know there's a big rivalry. So I am, uh, I am so blessed because I'm actually going to be out there um, on, I think, November 5th and joining community. Some really Kevin Honeycutt, Leslie Fisher are going to be there. I'm like, feel really blessed uh, to be with such an incredible group of, uh, speakers and, uh, and your, and the, the way you talk up your staff, like it's going to be an amazing day. So I, I'm really pumped to join y'all. Well, that's, you're absolutely right. This It's going to be a fantastic day and we're really excited to have you joining us, George. I think it's, it's just going to be amazing. I can hardly wait. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be, I love it. I love Michigan. I just love going to Michigan. So I'm, I'm pumped. So John and I are going to talk a little bit about that day, what's coming up. But before we do that, we're going to do uh, three questions because I want to know some of the inspiration. So John, I know that you talk so you know highly of your your teaching staff, your entire staff. You got some you know uh, credible administrators there, so I'm pumped to meet them. But when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, you know whether it was as a student, uh, maybe someone you worked with, who's someone you think of and why? Oh, that's an easy one. I'm thinking of my middle school art teacher, Russell Turecki. Russ Turecki, um, actually, his son, Dan, Dan and I went to school together, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, and we're still best friends now. But Dan's dad was just an amazing teacher. And Russ, um, okay, so I have no art talent whatsoever. I mean, even my stick people look bad. <laughs> but I was in this class with Mr. Turecki and we're doing all these, you know, perspective drawings and 3D and all this stuff. But what I really got from that guy was a sense of caring and a sense of family. Yet at the same time, he, he kind of had a structure and a discipline to him for, yeah, we're going to, we really care about you. We want to work with you, but we're going to get some stuff done too. And here's how we're going to do it. And Russ just had this great way of relating to kids. It's kind of funny. I was online this morning before I came in and I saw this quote by Brad Johnson and Brad says, a great teacher is not defined by their perfection, but by their heart resilience mm -hmm. and ability to connect and bring out the best in their students, making a lasting impact every day. And to me, that kind of was really Russ Trekkie. I mean, he meant a lot to me as a teacher. He helped me along. But as a person, too, you know, when I was growing up, um, my mom and dad actually got divorced when I was real, really young. And Dan's um, dad, Mr. Trecky, and his mom, who was like a para pro at our school, too, they were like mom and dad to me, too. I mean, it was like I had this incredible family at school when I went to school. And Dan's mom, Lori, she'd always be like, "Put, we're going out to play football. Put your coat on, dear. You need your hat on today. It's really cold. And I'd be like, oh, dude, but it's, you know, I'm putting these sunglasses on. And I'm going to go be cool. But they were just they were just huge in inspirations to me. Funny story though, real quick, George. Uh, like I said, Dan's dad was a um, art teacher, but he was also a gifted artist. And we'd have an art fair in St. Clair every year when I was growing up. So Dan's dad was there, and he had all of this art on display. And I stopped by his booth, and he and I was like eighteen at the time, and he had this awesome picture that he painted of a wolf. And it's like sitting out there in the woods and it's got the snow. And I'm sure he has all this like imagery in his head and everything of why he did this picture. But I look at it and I go, Lone Wolf. He's like, what? I'm like, it's Lone Wolf. It's Lone Wolf. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, don't you remember Rambo? Lone Wolf calling Wolf Den, Lone Wolf. So I bought that painting from him. It's still hanging in my house. And, and yeah, it means a lot to me because Dan's dad did it and everything. But I'm like, oh, Russ Trecky, let's give a little shout out. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, the <laughs> first of all, I'm going to say, John, like you and I, you're a little bit older than me, and you mentioned this. I had no clue. And the stuff that you referenced, you seem way younger than I am, too. So 
So I love a little Rambo. I, I think that's got to be the first Rambo reference ever in the podcast. So I think maybe you. Well, are thanks. I'll people. take that as a compliment, buddy. <laughs> I think you and I are the only people who know what you're talking about there. So the the thing that's actually been coming up quite a bit lately, and I don't know if it's just kind of the sign of the times. There is this connection between like teachers that really really care, but also had very high expectations. And, you know, we're not necessarily just always easy on you, but they lifted you, you know, but they had expectations that you lived up to. And so I think that that's really resonating with me lately. So I know I do better. Um, a lot of people that really connected with me when I was a kid, uh, they weren't easy on me. Right. And there wasn't yeah, for sure. It wasn't because they didn't like me. It was the opposite. Right. They, they saw something that they, they knew I could hone and that discipline was really, really important. So. I know you mentioned you have um, a, a few new principals in the district. You work with some incredible ones. I think, did you all read Weight Makes a Good Principal? Did you not mention that? I swear you told me this. Yeah, I, I did. I actually I actually bought that for them. Yeah. And we're going to uh, do a book study with that this year as part of our principal meetings. Love it. So love it. We, we, I gave it to them like the three new ones when they walked in the door. And so we're really excited to kind of dig into that and work with that. Well, hey, while you're reading it, Alice and I will send a couple of messages there too. With you, so hopefully make it a little bit more personal. So I know you've worked with some incredible administrators throughout your career. You work with some uh, right now. But when you think of a really great administrator, who's someone you think of and why? Immediately right off the bat, I think of Barb Peters, who was our assistant superintendent in um, Essexville, my uh, previous school district that I was at. Uh, it's actually really funny because... I was a teacher at the junior high and the assistant principal had left. So I applied to be assistant principal and Barb ran the interview committee and I didn't get the job. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I really tried. I'd put my best into it. And Barb was like, well, you know, we brought in Barry because he has just a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. Turned out Barry was going to be a principal in the district. So they wanted to start him out with an AP job. Mm. I didn't know that at the time. So Barry leaves after a year assistant principal job and my building's open again. I'm like, yeah, this is me. This is me. I want that. I want that. And I interviewed and I didn't get the job. And I'm like, so now I'm like, oh, Essexville, this stinks, man. Just, what, what are these people doing? You know, I'm working real hard. I'm doing everything. Can't believe that. I'm going to look around. I'm going to look around. So then, you know, about maybe a year after that, another job opens and it is the, um, they called it director of communications, marketing and staff development. I'm like, whatever. And then, so the, they actually called me up on the day the applications were due. Barb calls me up. She's like, we don't have your resume, John. And I'm like, I don't really want to be a, whatever that is, marketing and staff development. She's like, get your resume over to central office today. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I turned my resume in and I get this job. Now I'm working with this amazing lady who everybody in the district loves and I'm working with the superintendent. Not everybody loved him, but he was a great superintendent. <laughs> and she didn't want me to be an assistant principal. That wasn't their plan for me. I didn't get that when I was interviewing and not getting it. I started out, I'm doing marketing staff development and um, communications, like I said. And then she says, well, I want you to be the assessment coordinator. And so I'm like, okay, no problem. And we're doing like MEEP at the time or whatever they call it, Roadrunner MEEP MEEP test. And so... And then a little while later, she's like, I want you to take over school improvement. And I'm like, okay, that, that sounds cool. Keep working together. And then she's like, um, I want, why don't we split this up? And I'm going to do K-5 curriculum and you're going to do 6-12 curriculum. I'm like, sure, why not? And all the time I'm working with Barb, I'm learning from Barb. And Barb was like, Barb was so cool because like one time I got up to do this presentation and I'm like, I'm going to tell you about this. And, and I got done. And I remember Barb pulled me aside and she's like, there's no I in team. And I know it sounds corny, but every time Barb got up to do something, whether she was presenting something that I did all the work for, or she did half or whatever, it was, you know, we want to share this with you. This is what we're doing. And, and that really resonated with me that and her kind of her style for treating people like on, on your team, like they're part of your family, like they're your inner group. And so that really hit home for me. And then lo and behold, Barb retires and Barb's like, you're going to be taking over as assistant superintendent. Mm. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then 
you know, I, I did that gig and that was the best gig I ever had in the world, I think was an assistant superintendent of instruction. Mm -hmm. Did that for a, a few years and the superintendent left and the board's like, you want to be superintendent? I'm like, no, I don't want anything to do with that, man. No way. <laughs> I got the best gig in the world. So I passed on it. They had somebody come in who really struggled, not all their fault, but they, they really struggled and messed some things up. And they came back to me again and they're like, you want to be superintendent? And I'm like, I'm not going through this again. Yeah, sign me up. But a lot of that was um, a lot of where I am now and, and the things I do now, we're all Barb, all Barb Peters. Barb Peters, let's go. <laughs> yeah, hopefully Barb's listening. So that is, uh, you know, it's actually interesting as you're listening to this because I, there's a lot of jobs I did, um, you know, in K-12 that I was pushed into that I didn't think I could do that I had no interest in doing but someone saw something and they kind of like level you up and then you you know because of their mm -hmm. expectation you kind of pick things up so I think it's actually interesting because I, I write about Kelly Wilkins who did that for me uh, in what makes a great principal putting you in those mm -hmm. positions where you started achieving things that you didn't know but they see something they have that little outsider view and I, I just think that's that's really really powerful but again like you can see a kind of a through line between what you're sharing high expectations right and so yeah for sure expectations others set for you sometimes you know make you do greater work so i know that you have a a, a story career in education uh, you've been doing this for a while but if you can go back to your very first year what advice would you give to yourself and why oh that was like 33 years ago um i i think that you know it's actually advice that i was given a little bit so i i'm gonna go back to i would tell myself dude you gotta chill out you just got to chill a little and relax. My principal, um, Brian Melko, huge dude, like six foot something dude, big guy. I remember going into his office. He was going to be observing me. And I'm, I'm like, hey, hey, Brian, you know, I've got, hey, Mr. Melko, I've got this great lesson I'm going to be doing when you come in on cooperative learning. And we're going to be using, you know, we're working in the ODEM outcomes driven developmental model or whatever the ice cream was that day. We're going to be doing this stuff and it's going to be great. And here's my lesson plan. And here's this and here's this. And he looks at me and he's like, John, you're a great teacher, but you got to, you got to relax a little bit. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean, sir? And he goes, he, I'm, I'm not kidding you. He looks at me, looks at me dead in the face and he goes, dude, you're pretty wound up. It's like somebody shoved a stick up your ass. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta chill out. And I'm like, yeah, he, he was right. That, that version of me was, was pretty wow. wound up about everything and i was like yes sir no sir and there he's like relax man just relax so i think if i could go and i've learned that kind of you know we've been through a lot in our life and we were kind of talking about that with you um before we got started with my family and everything some some tragic things that happened with my wife passing away and and i i would tell that guy dude relax let people know the white snake winger motley crew side of you as right. much as they're seeing this organized detailed guy so yeah and that, that's something you know i i had a very similar experience early in my career i was very wound up stressed about everything a speaker came into our school district it was my third year and he said never let an eight-year-old ruin your day and i was like oh my god like this is me i am like going home crying every night everything i'm taking personally and it wasn't it wasn't the advice like don't like who cares about the kids it was like hey don't you like you get to work with kids. This is a wonderful opportunity. And some of the stuff that they're struggling with, it's just being passed on to because who do we often are we worse to? It's not the people, um, it's not strangers, it's typically people that we know care about us. That's because and that's what a lot of kids are doing. So I, I appreciate that because uh I was I, I wouldn't say a stick up anywhere, but <laughs> Oh, well, so maybe I should have phrased that differently, but it was no, a direct quote, dude. That's no, so. all good. Now I got two first. I got the ramble and the stick up your ass thing. So there you go. So there <laughs> oh, you go. Great. That's right. what I'm going to be known for. <laughs> I love it. John, thanks so much for being on the podcast. And John actually, by the way, this is Saturday. He's wearing a tie. I saw him tweet. I'm like, oh man, I'm not wearing a tie. So I love it. So he's it's like, George Kuros. What else are you it, gonna... man. I love it. So yeah. I can't wait to see you and your entire school community. I, I feel really excited to to see y'all in all of that. So thanks for being on the podcast. I can't wait to talk more and learn more about you and your district.